For the first time, we're hearing from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum about the death of Robert Gentile. This is video of him in the wheelchair during a court hearing years ago in Connecticut. Gentile was believed to be the last known person to have the museum's stolen artwork. The 1990 robbery remains the largest unsolved art heist in U.S. history. The FBI initially estimated the value of the 13 missing pieces at $500 million, Ooh. but the works are now priceless because they are impossible to sell. Now you're looking at all 13 missing pieces right here. Their frames, of course, now sit empty in the museum. Boston 25 News reporter Bob Ward has been covering this case for years now. He joins us live from outside the museum. And Bob, the museum is hopeful someone new might come forward now with new information. Vanessa, there's a lot of optimism in the air tonight about this investigation. Over the decades, there have been, been many highs and lows and even heartache. But the death of Robert Gentile could prove to be a turning point. We're not deterred or downtrodden or delayed because of the death of Robert Gentile. Anthony Amore, the director of security for the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, has long had Connecticut mobster Robert Gentile on his mind. Investigators believe Gentile was likely involved with moving the stolen Gardner Museum artwork from Boston to possibly Philadelphia for sale. But now, Robert Gentile is dead. I think he took information to his grave, certainly. I just don't know what it was. And we'll never know now. The feds believe Robert Gentile came into the picture years after the Gardner theft in an effort to move the stolen paintings. When the feds hit Gentile's Connecticut house, they did not find the paintings, but they did find other evidence, including a handwritten list of the stolen paintings with their estimated street values. Gentile later failed a government polygraph. You can't bank everything on a polygraph, of course, but when you add it to the totality of what we know, it's an interesting fact. Ryan McGuigan is Gentile's attorney. He believes the feds went out of their way to hurt his client. But McGuigan has his own questions about Gentile's alleged involvement. Is there any information that he shared with you that might shed some light on who had the paintings, where they went, and who might have them now? Yeah, we, we've had many conversations about the paintings over the, the years. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations about them, so I, I have drawn some conclusions about what may have happened ultimately uh, with the paintings and where they went, but at this point, I, I, I'm not really willing to share that. Is that information the government has? No, no. Gentile left behind a will. Is there anything in that will that you're aware of that might shed some light on the stolen paintings? At this point, I cannot comment on that. My law firm drafted the will for him, so I will respect the beneficiaries of the will and uh, I can't comment. Is it possible there's something there and you need to look at it? It's possible. I haven't, I haven't looked at it some time. It could be the beginning of the last chapter. Intriguing, isn't it? Now, the FBI issued a statement today saying this case is still open and active and reminding people that the reward that's being offered for the return of the stolen artwork is $10 million. Vanessa Anak. Bob, Gentile's lawyer, he was a little guarded there with his answers. Did he really say that his client may have left behind some information about this stolen art? Yeah, he told me, Vanessa, that he remembered that there could be something in that will. He wanted to go take a look at it. Um, when I brought it up, I said, are you serious about this? And he said, yes, I am. I, I, I want to take a look. I need to take a look. We'll have to wait and see. It's a very cryptic thing to say, but I gave him a couple of opportunities there. And each time he said that it is possible that there is something in that will that talks about this stolen artwork. It's intriguing, and I was hanging on every yeah. word that he had to say there. It was a great job, Bob. What does the museum think about all of this? Well, Anthony Amore said that it's natural in many other cases of stolen artwork that years later, generation later, that when someone dies, that people are less afraid to come forward, uh, allegiances are gone, and they step forward and they say what they know about the art, and that leads to a recovery. So that's what they're hoping what might happen here. And now that Gentile is gone, anything is possible. This is a case that has fascinated people for decades, Bob. Hopefully there is a break in this case soon. Great reporting. Thank you, Bob.